30 Minutes with Ron. Hello, my name is Ron Gagliardi. I'm the host of 30 Minutes with Ron. And tonight we're going to be discussing John F. Kensett and some things that are coming up in his life, although he's no longer with us. We have two guests here to, for the first part of the show. Melanie Rice is going to start out giving us some information, followed by Joanne Polarczyk. Melanie, you're on. Thank you, Ron. Part of what we're doing in town to celebrate Kensett's 200th birthday is we're having an Emmy Award winning host and writer come to town. His name is David Dunlap. He hosted a PBS show called Landscapes Through Time. He's going to come for an entire weekend, um, Saturday, February 27th and Sunday, February 28th. The Saturday is free and open to the public. Anyone's welcome to come with pre-registration. He's going to give a lecture in the morning called Exploring the Mind and Art of John Frederick Kensett, followed by a painting demo in the afternoon. And then after that, everyone's invited to the Cheshire Historical Society at 5 p.m. for a bonfire and to enjoy the Kensett cocktail. Now, uh, Sunday, February 28th, is by uh, pre-registration only. It does cost $20 for adults and $12 for high school students. But this day, uh, he'll be doing a demo in the morning, and then he'll also, in the afternoon, you get to do a workshop with him. You get to bring your own art supplies, and you'll be learning how to paint in the style of Kensett, paint a landscape, uh, port uh, landscape painting. Uh, this c was provided very generously for, from a grant supported in part by the Arts and Culture Collaborative Waterbury Region in partnership with the Connecticut Department of Economic and Community Development, Office of the Arts, and the National Endowment for the Arts. Excellent. I hope to attend myself. I am very excited and looking forward to it. Yeah. Anything else from you or should we go right to Joanne? Yes, actually, we are also in, also in honor of uh, John Frederick Kensett's 200th birthday. We're actually going to throw him a birthday party. So on March 20th at 4 o'clock uh, at the upstairs at Arts Place, everyone's invited to come enjoy some cake, art activities, meet a Kensett impersonator, watch a video about Kensett's life, enjoy some period music. There's also going to be a volcano eruption. And if you bought one of our commemorative plates that are right here, uh, you also get a special cupcake if you bring that plate with you. A volcano eruption. You don't normally expect that to be included with some kind of an art event. Would no. you care to explain or would you like Joanne to explain? Um, I can explain. Right. So uh, around the time that Kensett was born, there was a volcano eruption. And it was the summer that there was, or there, the summer. year without a summer. 1816. <laughs> yes. Um, so that's why we're going to have a volcano. Sounds like a joyous time will be had by all. Yes. Anything Should else? Be. Nope, that's it. Well, Joanne Polarczyk. Well, I want to thank Melody. She's the secretary of the Friends Organization. Um, Friends of what? The Friends of CPFA Arts Place, Inc., a 501c3 that was able to write and get this wonderful grant for us to do so many activities with Kensett. And CPFA stands for? Cheshire Performing and Fine Arts Committee. Excellent. So thank you, Melanie, for everything you've done. Melanie's also been working on a flyer. It will appear shortly in uh, all the Cheshire Citizen issues. Wow. And it will tell you all of the activities we have going on to celebrate Kensett's birthday and how to register. Mainly, you just call Arts Place. One thing in front of you, you can see it. We have the plate. And we have um, an order form at Arts Place, so you can download it from our website, which I understand you'll see on this program as well. And the plates are all individually handmade. And on the back, there's a special commemorative stamp that has John Frederick Kensett's birth date and the day he passed away. And we're just making these for a limited time, $25. You can pick out which pattern or which color you'd like of the plates. And when you receive this plate, you bring it to Arts Place the day of the birthday, and you'll receive a very special cupcake. Now, everybody else in town, you're welcome to come. You'll get a piece of cake. It won't be the special cupcake. So we hope that you will buy this original and commemorative Kensett plate and enjoy it. Another thing we have, um, a contest is a banner contest. I don't know if you've noticed outside of Arts Place, which is 1220 Waterbury Road, we have a large banner, four by six, hangs vertically by the front door. And on that banner, we have art by our national award-winning instructors from Arts Place. 
So what we're doing is giving you a chance to become a national award winner. If you are the winner of this contest, your um, banner will hang by the front door and you'll also receive a $200 gift certificate to a local art supply store. The banner contest is simple to enter. It needs to be vertical format, this direction, and simply say happy birthday Kenzit on it. This contest is open to children in grades one through adults. There'll be a blind judging, so even if you're a professional artist or a teacher or associated with Arts Place in any way, you may enter because no one will know which is your submission. And I'm very excited about this project. It'll be a banner day. A banner day. Yes. I hope that you'll enter, Ron. <laughs> Well, um, I'm certainly not going to be one of, the, one of the national winners of anything, but I may give it a go. Um, I just want to say, to find out a lot of the information, if you can go on our Facebook page, Arts Place, comma, CPFA, you'll be able to keep up with all of our activities. I wanted to mention a few of the programs that we have happening um, in town. On March 1st, you can sculpt a birthday cake out of felt with Robin McCahill. That's at Arts Place. On March 5th, you can paint a birthday cake out of acrylics if you're a child in grades 4 through 7. And you can use oil paints and paint your cake and eat it too with <laughs> Rita Parody in an oil painting class that's held on um, March 16th in the evening and March 19th during the day. And all these are for a very nominal fee and supplies are included and I hope that lots of people will learn about our, one of our most famous residents in this town. I'm John Frederick Kensett. If you go any place in the world, you'll see his artwork hanging, as well in hundreds and hundreds of museums in this country. We're very proud of him. Yes, he was apparently a cool dude. Um, I want to I want to bring something up, but I want to make sure that you get to say what uh, what you need to say because I don't want to interrupt you. No, you go ahead, Ron. I like what you're going to be talking oh, about. Oh, all right then. Uh, some years ago, I believe it was around 1997. I became aware of this Kensett fellow, and I'm a former elementary art teacher, and I still teach here and there, and I even teach cartooning at Arts Place, That's right. but I'm not one of those national award winners. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I thought, you know, I should do something to help the town to get to be aware of this mm -hmm. Kensett guy. So I found out that his house, where he was born, was uh, where the Bliss Wedding Place is now. The Alderson Funeral Home was there at the time. And I thought, wouldn't it be appropriate to reenact his wake in the house that he was born. <laughs> and so I found out that he was a Mason, and I contacted the Masons in town and asked if they would be happy, or would, would be willing rather, to do a, a wake in the Mason fashion. And so they said, oh yes, we'd be happy to do that. So uh, we got the folks from Alderson to let us in, and the folks from the Masons came in, and uh, Sterling Jewett, who was mm -hmm. uh, playing the keyboard at that point, played the act, exact sounds, songs rather, that were played at Kensett's Wake, really? which was in New York. Uh, one of them, I think, was nearer my God to Thee, uh, but I'm, I'm, my memory is shot, so I, something like that. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> at that event, um, I had these cards printed up. I had a picture, a photograph of Kensett painting an actual painting, like a landscape. So what I did was I took a photo of his house and stuck that in <laughs> where the landscape had been. And I titled it, John F. Kensett Painting His House, <laughs> as if he were a house painter. Mm -hmm. So that was what I handed out. And also around the same time, I decided that there should be some kind of a commemoration of his existence in town. And so I went to the town council and I said, how about if we had Kensett Corner? I, I like the alliteration mm -hmm. of that. So the town council actually voted, and they said, yes, we will have Kensett Corner. And strangely enough, the Parks and Recreation Department is in charge of having areas named. Mm -hmm. So I went before them, and they said, we will have that corner where the gazebo is in front of Cheshire High School. Nice. So no one really knows that that's where Kensett Corner is, but they will soon. Now they do. Now you mm -hmm. do, yes, because at that same time, I was trying to have a banner created, and I got permission, I got some donations, but now we have one person who's willing to fund this. And this is what the banner will look like. Uh, now, CPFA uh, had someone do a painting. You have Correct. to say her name. Shuang Zhao. Shuang Zhao. And she did this painting, which now hangs in the foyer of the town hall. And it's huge. It's like, what, 20 feet? No, not 20 feet. Maybe 10 feet high, 15 feet high? Yes, it's large. It's beautiful. Life size. So I got permission from CPFA to use that as, as the banner. And the top of it will say, Cheshire's most famous artist, and then in parentheses, so far. 
that will encourage other artists in Cheshire to, to be as, well, as famous as he. And then on the bottom we'll have his name and her name commemorating both of them. And so that will hang on that corner as well on one of the light poles. One of them belongs to the state, and it's a little difficult to go through their hoops to get it on that one. I'm hoping that the one that's on uh, the high school property will be the one that it will go on to. And hopefully it will be an all-weather manner, yeah. and people will see it, and people will be happy to know, huh, that's that guy. They're all talking <laughs> about him all over town. Yes, it's very exciting. I'm excited. Finally, after so many years, Exactly, banner, and huh? right in time for his birthday. Yes, mm -hmm. and I like his birthday because it's close to my birthday. Even we better. should mention when his birthday is, yes. When is it? March 22nd, 20th. Oh, 20, 1816. Right. Yeah, mine's March 23rd. And I mm -hmm. actually saw yeah. something that said March 23rd. There were two, two names, for, two t uh, dates for his birthday, but people seem to like the March 22nd one. Yes, we know that that's yeah. correct yes. now. I'm okay. sorry, though, Ron. Darn. Almost what can you famous. Do? <laughs> okay, so now, John F. Kensett, you said he's, he's all over the world. You've been to museums where that you've seen his paintings? I was in a museum in Madrid, and it said John Frederick Kensett, Cheshire, Connecticut. I thought, no one even knows his name yet. We right. need to introduce this wonderful um, artist to our fellow residents. I was in London. I was in Italy. Every place you go, his paintings are hanging. They're huge. He died at a very early age, mm -hmm. 56, tragically, and he was just starting a new style, Luminism. And, you know, when he had passed away, he left this last picture, and he wasn't just painting what he saw in front of him anymore, he was changing the colors. So, um, painting more an illusion or an impression, but they call it Luminism. His artwork is, is beautiful. And you can also find his artwork a lot more locally in museums in Connecticut as well as at the Met in yeah. New York. They had some at the New Britain Museum a while back. They had a show that had a few of his in there. Yes. And so he was one of the founders of the Met, and they have a, a big area of his paintings, but also, like Melanie said, New Britain, Yale Art Gallery, the Mattatuck, and in fact, our own Cheshire Historical Society. Right. That's oh. right. There's a, there's a study there of uh, Niagara Falls. Yeah, yeah and that's going to be on view um, on Saturday, February 27th at, during the reception. Okay. I remember that there was also something at the Mattituck Museum, and folks from Cheshire went in costume, and Joe Trifolo, who I had as a reader at, at Kensett's Mock Wake, mm -hmm. uh, he now portrays Kensett. And That's right, and he's come back for this birthday party, and, and he's been in several activities. And you might just see him in Stop and Shop. You just don't know where he's going to turn up. You never know up. where Joe's going to be, or Kenzie's yeah. going to end up. That's exactly. Right. Yeah. Well, I think, unless you guys have more to say, well, we're about to break for our next two guests. Okay. So thank, thank you. Thank you very thank much you very for much. being with us, yeah. and uh, happy Kenzie Day. <laughs> thank you. Welcome back. Strangely enough, I'm still Ron Gagliardi, and you are tuned in to the 30 Minutes with Ron show yet again. We have two new guests for us. We have Betsy Fox over here and Diane Calibro over here. And Betsy is going to regale us with information about good stuff, including the Kensett doll. I will. Yes. I'll give you a little bit of background on the Kensett doll. All righty. Um, I was invited as a number of nonprofits and commissions and committees in Cheshire to attend a, um, a planning meeting for the Kensett birthday coming up. We had the meeting in the, in the summer and I heard about all these great things that all the rest of the people were doing and I sat there saying, oh dear, what are we going to do? So as I was driving home, I was thinking about um, Flat Stanley that's being used you know, to uh, promote literature with kids and I thought, well, why can't we have a, something with Kensett? that we would take around to historic sites and art museums. And then we came up with an idea of doing a Kensett doll. So this is Minnie Kinney in <laughs> front of you. He's our Kensett doll. Um, and you may have already seen him around town. He's been um, visiting uh, um, different sites, including the Historical Society. He was at Ives Farm. He was at the Fall Festival. And what we're doing is we're taking pictures 
and this is not only the commissioners, but we've had other people take many kinsets it, it to other sites as well, taking pictures of him at the site, putting them up on a web page, which is called Kensett Birthday. I mean, it's a Facebook page called Kensett Birthday, and you're asked to guess where he is. And the person who guessed, then we give a little bit more historic, historical information on the place and what's Kensett connection to the place that you've guessed. We hope people will join the Facebook page and will continue to guess. And the person that guesses the most amount of correct places will win this plate at the end of, 18, uh, of 2016. But I do want to mention how the doll was actually created. Um, once we came up with the idea of, of doing a doll, I, I asked a couple of people if they knew someone who could make it. And Agnes Winock, who works at Arts Place, said, I'll make you a Kensett doll. And I said, really? And she said, yes. I'm going to base it on a portrait of him when he was 34 years old. So that's what this doll is based on. And that's the appropriate costume that he's wearing now as well. And you'll see he has a, an artist palette that he goes around with. This is not his only costume. You might want to see him with, without his hat. This is not his only costume. He has a straw hat that he's been wearing in the summer um, when, she, when he goes out into the field to, and, and landscape to paint. He had a Santa Claus hat that he wore to the Historical Society's holiday party. And you never know what you're going to see him in next. And these are all, all of these are also been created by, by Agnes Winock. So that's a little bit of the background story. Uh, Ron, what we really wanted to do is use the doll to, to explore places that Kensett would have known about. Ah, yes. Um, the most recent posting on the Facebook page was at the Lockwood Matthews Mansion in Norwalk um, at the time that that was built. Um, it was the largest private home in America. It was, um, the, the second largest domestic space was the White House. So he would have definitely known uh, of that house since he lived in the neighboring community of Darien on Contentment Island at that time. He had a studio in New York, but he lived, also had a summer place on Contentment Island. And um, the person who built the house, LeGrand Lockwood and Kensett both died in the same year, 1872. So I thought that was an interesting coincidence with him. And it was a guest, it guest immediately from one of our Facebook followers from Rowayton, Connecticut. Ah, yeah. So we have followers from not just from Cheshire. They knew. So that's, that's a little bit of background on our mini Kenny. Mini Kenny. And you know, I did not ask you to tell us a little bit about you because I know that you have some interesting credentials about museums and in Cheshire on the Historic District Commission. So just give us a small resume. Oh my God, okay. Um, I've um, been in the museum consulting field for about 20 years. I've been working in museums for about 35 years, um, mostly in history museums. And I went on to the Historic District Commission five years ago, I believe it was, and then became chair three years ago. And it's, um, it's a fascinating commission to serve on because you learn so much um, about historic preservation. So that's, that's it in a nutshell. Excellent. <laughs> All right, you can put uh, Minnie Kenny down and have a little rest. And now, Diane Calabro, it is your turn. All right. You right. may regale us. <laughs> well, the f I wanted to start by saying that uh, the Minnie Kensett came to the Cheshire Historical Society for our Christmas party, as did a full-scale reenactor who also arrived in costume. So we had actually two Kensets on the property <laughs> at the same time. And at one point, they were partying together because the theme of the Cheshire Historical Society Christmas party was party like a rock star. Well, party like a history rock star. Uh -huh. And uh, the Kensets, both small and large, uh, did exactly that, and as did the many, many people that came to the Historical Society for the Christmas party. It was very well attended, and I think because Kensett was our guest of honor, both mini and full size. And full size was Joe Trifolo. Yes, yes. And we should add that you are the president of the Cheshire Historical I am, I am. So I, I was 
the, the, and it, often people will come up and say, is this going to be okay? And I always say, I'll have to check with the president. Yes, yes it's okay. <laughs> so it was okay that Joe was there in his, in his costume, and it was absolutely okay that the many Kents, it was there in his Christmas regalia as well. Are you going to mention one of the reasons that they were going to have a little libation? Yes. A special libation. We were really, really so proud and so pleased to have a new group in town called Cheshirepedia. You've all heard of Wikipedia. Well, Cheshirepedia is our Cheshire's version of just Wikipedia, just for Cheshire. These are all things Cheshire. In fact, they say Cheshirepedia, all things Cheshire. But I asked them if they would do a very special favor for me, and they did. They created a Kensit cocktail. Uh, so it's Kensit with a K, cocktail with a K, and they did something very special. They used ingredients that were from Kensit's time period. So it wasn't like they were having something that we, well, we could technically go to a liquor store and buy these same ingredients, but we probably wouldn't unless we knew how delicious they were in the combination that Cheshirepedia made them. So Cheshirepedia used some very interesting ingredients. Laird's Applejack was one of them. I'm, I'm looking at my crib notes. I'm sorry, you don't <laughs> mind. Anyway, Laird's Applejack, hard cider, still or sparkling, cranberry simple syrup. And I said to Betsy, who has cranberry simple syrup? And you explained that it's simple syrup, which is sugar and water plus cranberries, which that, that sounded okay. Makes sense. Yep. <laughs> cranberries, sugar, mint leaves, orange bitters, and some special Cape Cod select frozen cranberries for garnish. This was all put together in an absolutely sublime cocktail. I'm sure this little man enjoyed it too. Of course. Uh, but, but all of the uh, Kensets, large and small, had uh, an imbibing of this special cocktail. He was actually at the tasting mm -hmm. when they did the taste off. <laughs> and I wasn't, and I missed that. But yeah, we had, no, we had a group of people he was come invited in. And, for that. Yeah, and, and actually kind of made sure that it was a <laughs> tremendously wonderful cocktail. Yeah, and from what I heard, they didn't get the right combination right off. So they probably had to do test number one, test number three, test, test number, number 10. 25. <laughs> it must have been a fine group to belong to. I understand it was a special evening, and they enjoyed it. So that was good. But they brought in, the Cheshirepedia group brought in a very special person. Uh, they brought in an actual bartender who muddled and swirled and shook and made the drink absolutely more wonderful. A mixologist. Yes, yes, he was a mm. professional. So we were excited to have that person there as well. Can you mention any names of these people with Cheshirepedia? Uh, yeah, well, we have um, John Fournier, of course, is the president of Cheshirepedia. We have uh, Janae Chesnow, her husband, Dr. Bob Chesnow. Actually, they're both doctors. Uh, and then their son, uh, Matt Chesnow, came in at the last minute to replace John, who had a conflicting engagement. And he, surprisingly enough, came in with tuxedo, and he was the amazing bartender of the evening. Uh, they also had a virgin version, a non-alcoholic version of the drink as well, which was also, people said, very, very good. Uh, but that was one of the really big highlights of our day was to have the Kensit cocktail on the premises. Kensit cocktail. And what a concept. And the Kensit cocktail will come back to the bonfire on February 27th. And I can continue on about the bonfire. Well, you know, what interested me when I first heard that there was going to be a bonfire do you need a special permit from the fire department and police department and health department and all those departments? I assumed I would. So I made phone calls and I was told, I, I explained what this was. And, and I'm, I was told that as long as we don't burn car tires or any other <laughs> tires, we're okay. Wow. I, I, and I don't, I mean, I don't want to say to everyone listening, oh, go out and start a fire in your backyard. No, please contact contact the fire department before you do that. But my experience was that when I explained what the purpose was, just don't burn tires. And I said, yes, sir, we will, we will not burn tires. And have you got the precise location of that? Is it in the backyard, the front yard, mm -hmm. the church green? Where is it going to be? It will not be on the church green. I kind of thought it was going <laughs> to be on the church green. It will not be in the front yard. It will be in the backyard behind the Hitchcock Phillips House Museum. And we have Boy Scout Troop number 51, who is actually building a very safe area ringed with uh, Belgian blocks with sand, and they will monitor all of the fire activity. Wow. Yeah. 
Sounds like the yard will be ablaze. Not, not the Hopefully entire not. yard. Not, no, not the uh, entire several yard. garden clubs and park and rec that will come after me with a hatchet probably. Uh -huh. so I'm sure. No, no, it'll be very safe. It'll be conducted in a very mannerly way. Okay. Anything else you want to share with us? Well, uh, slightly after that, on April 5th, um, we have John Astuno's son. Uh, John Astuno is an octogenarian who has lived in Cheshire, is part of the farming community, and has been here forever. He's a delightful, wonderful man, and he will talk to you about farming stories from forever. His son, Ernest, Ernie, is a meteorologist with the National Weather Service. He is based in Minnesota. And he is flying down from Minnesota to do a special presentation at the Cheshire Historical Society on Tuesday night, April 5th at 7 o'clock p.m., where he's going to talk about the Tambora volcano that happened in 1815. And that 1815 volcano, about a year later, had a huge and horrific impact on our town. It is called the, the, we, the year. <laughs> the year without a summer. <laughs> or the other one is 1800 and froze to death. Both terms describe that summer of 1816. And one of the things that happened was farmers, of course, are because that's what was in Cheshire at the time, were farmers. Farmers were planting crops as they would in the spring. And the very first wave of, of chilled air came through in early June to the point where tubs of things froze. All of the early plantings turned black from frost and from cold. Sheep that had just been shorn froze to death because they had no protective fur or, or hair on them, wool on them to, to keep them from freezing. So there was a little bit of a respite, a respite and then farmers thought, okay, we'll try again. They put another crop in. By June, another wave of cold air came in and killed that crop. And some smart farmers took corn from, from stalks, knowing that the cold weather was coming, put the corn upright in their barns, and the corn ripened on the stalk in the barn. And that was the only way they could salvage the crop. Wow. So they did try to plant yet a third crop. It failed miserably because the cold continued. So here it was, June, July, August, and people are wearing winter coats, water is freezing, nothing is growing, and of course for a community that relies only on farming material, food that we've grown, right. there was no food grown. So it was a, hor a horrible, horrible experience through the winter for our Cheshire residents in 1816 going into 1817. Hmm. Glad I wasn't there. <laughs> now it turns out, something just as a complete aside, Cheshire seems to produce a lot of weather people. I believe Mr. Astuno went to Cheshire High School. There's three other folks who went to Cheshire <laughs> High School who are all broadcast weather people. And with uh, Ernie Astuno, he then went on to Western Connecticut College. Mm -hmm. And he probably took, I'm certain he took classes with Dr. Mel. Right. So that was uh, probably Dr. another Mel. common denominator for us. All right. Well, I see that we're winding down. And I just thought I would like to thank you both for coming. And I would like to encourage people who may be viewing the show to turn up for some of these things because they're going to be really great. But make sure you're there on time. Thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye.